guys I'm on booktube so my name is Christy welcome to my very first booktube video I was inspired to start this channel by sort of watching booktubers for months and months and months and I always wanted to have a go at myself but I've only just realised that my camera isn't as shit as I thought it was so all this time I could have been booktubing and I didn't because I thought I didn't have the technology and alas I do so I thought I would start my channel by giving you a London book haul from when I went on holiday to London last week. I devoted all my time to doing stuff that I love so I went to the theatre, I went to proms, I went to museums and believe it or not I went to lots of bookshops. My bookshop crawl started the day that I arrived, I went to Foils and this was quite exciting because as somebody who's never been to London before, Foils was like my new mecca. So I got a couple of books and foils, I could have got a lot more but I managed to restrain myself and I only got two because I was saving myself for my main bookshop crawl the next day. So the first book that I picked up in foils was Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan, which is a book that I've had on my TBR for quite a while now. Um, it was first recommended to me like back in April when I first read The Rental Heart by Kirsty Logan and when I'd finished that I was sort of tweeting her and I was speaking to her and I was saying I really enjoyed this, I really loved the blend of like magic realism and queer fiction, like playing with gender, all those kind of things and she said oh have you read anything by Margot Lanigan? I thought Tender Morsels is probably a good place to begin because I think it's one of her most famous books. Um, it's actually a retelling of Snow White and Rose Red? Do you get that right? Yes, Snow White and Rose Red. I'm suddenly thinking there are too many Snow Whites in the world of fairy tales and they're not all connected. But yes, it is Snow White and Rose Red. This is a really, really pretty edition. I was really happy that I finally found this because I've been keeping my eyes peeled for a while and just nowhere seemed to have it. Um, but this is a really nice edition by Vintage. It's just, it's beautiful. I love the cover. I love this bronze embossing it's got. Um, yeah, and I just, I can't wait to get started on this. The second book that I got from Foils was Sulfuric Acid by Amelie Nottom. It's a dystopian novella, it's about a televised death camp and how there's this one main girl called Pananique who is, um, she sort of casts herself in the role of like the saviour, the messiah and it's all about how sort of she is treated by her fellow inmates um, how they view her, how the guards view her and how she sort of becomes this media sensation and manages to sort of subvert the whole TV show. And I've actually already read this, I read this on the plane coming back. Um, I guess I have mixed feelings about it because while I really like Emily Nottam's writing style, um, I kind of have this issue with her female protagonists and it's something that I've noticed in all of the books by her that I've read so far this year. So I started with Auntie Krista and then in July I read The Book of Proper Names, which I think is my favourite out of the three that I've read. But it seems that throughout all her books there's this recurring theme of there being a female protagonist who just can't do anything wrong. So in Auntie Krista, it was obviously the main character, Auntie Krista, who, like, her best friend's family all start adoring her and love her more than their own daughter. Um, in the book of proper names there's Plectrude who is like can't do anything wrong she people think she's an idiot and then she just like develops these magical gifts to be amazing at school and she's an amazing dancer and everyone loves her um, and then in Sulfuric Acid Pananique is very much the same it's like she decides to be this messiah figure and everyone just goes along with it there's nobody saying who do you think you are like I don't know it's it's not something I've ever heard anyone else pick up on, but it's something that really has kind of bothered me when I've been reading some of her books. The next day was when my proper bookshop crawl began. So the first place that I went was Ripping Yarns. For those of you who don't know, is where the lovely Jen Campbell, who you will probably know from Booktube, that's where she works. I first started talking when I was maybe like 14, so it was absolutely amazing to finally go and meet her and talk about books and buy some books from her and yeah it was just great so hi Jen and thanks and thanks for being so lovely I guess. <laughs> so yeah one of the books that I got here was The Mermaids in the Basement by Marina Warner and this is actually Marina Warner's very first short story collection. Um, she's most often known for her sort of literary criticism she discusses a lot of things like um, feminism in fairy tales, sort of female transmission of folklore um, 
and I saw her at the Edinburgh Book Festival recently and I just thought her brain was amazing like I don't oh, I can't process how much she just knows all this stuff and it makes sense because she's dedicated her life to this but at the same time I came out and I think I'm not alone in saying this because even Christy Logan was saying this as well we were all just like we know nothing so that's why I got The Mermaids in the Basement. <laughs> Actually, um, when I went to go and pay for this, Jen was like, we had this in the bookshop the whole time and I never knew. Um, so, sorry Jen, I'm taking it off you. The next one that I got in Ripping Yarns is called Alice in Wonderland by Helen Smith. And I think this could be quite confusing if I'm telling people that I'm reading Alice in Wonderland because that they're not going to hear it as this. the back because I think it's kind of hard to explain and I haven't heard anyone mention it ever before so I think it's sort of off a lot of people's radars. But it says, after Alison Temple discovers that her husband is cheating on her, she does what any jilted woman would do. She spray paints a nasty message for him on her wedding dress and takes a job with the detective firm that found him out. Being a researcher in the all-female Fitzgerald's Bureau of Investigation in London is certainly a change of pace from her previous life, especially considering the characters Alison meets in the line of duty. There's her boss, the estimable Mrs Fitzgerald, Taryn, Alison's eccentric best friend, who claims her mother is a witch, Jeff, her love-struck poetry-writing neighbour, and last but not least, her psychic postman. Together, their idiosyncrasies and their demands on Alison threatened to drive her mad if she didn't need and love them all so much. Clever, quirky and infused with just a hint of magic, Alice in Wonderland is a literary novel about a memorable heroine coping with the everyday complexities of modern life. Fortunately, after I'd bought it and I took it away, I thought, I've never heard of this, I'm going to look it up on Goodreads and see if any of my friends have read it. And it's it's not faring well in Goodreads. I think it's got an average star rating of 2.4. The next one that I got was The Summer We All Ran Away by Cassandra Parkin and you can't actually tell that that's what it is from this edition because it's got this like legend press collection cover on the front which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah you can see the actual cover when you get to the inside. Um, I've heard good things about Cassandra Parkin's work and I've wanted to read it for a while. Not necessarily this book, but especially the likes of um, New World Fairy Tales. I've wanted to read that for a while, so I thought this would be a good starting place, a good introduction to her writing. It says in the back, When 19-year-old Davy finds himself drunk, beating and beaten and alone, he is rescued by the oddly assorted inhabitants of an abandoned and beautiful house in the West Country. Their only condition for letting him join them is that he asks them no questions. More than 30 years ago in that same house, burned out rock star Jack Laker writes a groundbreaking comeback album and abandons the girl who saved his life to embark on a doomed and passionate romance with a young actress. His attempt to escape his destructive lifestyle leads to deceit, debauchery and even murder. As Davy and his fellow housemate Press try to uncover the secrets of the house's inhabitants, both past and present, it becomes clear that the five strangers have all been drawn there by the events and the music of that long ago summer. So I think that sounds absolutely amazing. I can't wait to read this. And actually, just looking at it back now, I've realised that Jen's review is on the cover and I never noticed that before. So fingers crossed, I have high hopes. The last book that I picked up at Ripping Yarns was The Finishing School by Muriel Spark. I wasn't going to get this but then Jen pointed out that everything, like all the paperbacks, were a pound so I thought why not, I might as well just add it to my pile as well. So I read The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie back in December and I really enjoyed it so I thought I needed to branch out and read a bit more Muriel Spark. This one is about an aspiring teenage writer at a Swiss, Swiss finishing school, not a Swiss finishing school although I'm sure it probably is if it's a finishing school at all. Um, and how his teacher's jealousy sort of spirals out of control when he discovers that this sort of teenage writer has this amazing talent. So I think that could be quite sort of sinister. I don't know much more about it, but it does sound like my sort of book. So hopefully that'll be a nice quick read that I can get round to sometime soon. The next shop that I went to was Gaze the Word, which is considered to be like the best LGBT bookshop in the whole of the UK. Possibly. I don't know. I might have made that up, but it was definitely very, very good and really friendly. Like, I would definitely recommend it if you're into queer literature. The first book that I got there is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. 
and I don't usually read much YA and this is YA um, but actually it's been on my radar for a while now and I thought it sounded really interesting so I decided to give it a go. It says, when Cameron Post's parents die suddenly in a car crash, her shocking first thought is relief. Relief that they'll never know that hours earlier she had been kissing a girl. But that relief doesn't last and Cam is forced to move in with her conservative Aunt Ruth and her well-intentioned but hopelessly old-fashioned grandmother. She knows that from this point on, her life will be different. Survival in Miles City, Montana means blending in and leaving well enough alone and Cam becomes an expert at both. Then Coley Taylor moves to town. Beautiful pickup driving Coley is a perfect cowgirl with the perfect boyfriend to match. She and Cam forge an unexpected and intense friendship, one that seems to leave room for something more to emerge. But just as this starts to seem like a real possibility, ultra-religious Aunt Ruth takes drastic action to fix her niece, bringing Cam face to face with the cost of denying her true self, even if she's not quite sure who that is. I'm really fascinated by that whole culture in America of like the the Christian homophobia. Like I know the two aren't like you know always the same. Like I'm not saying that all Christians are really homophobic. Um, but yeah, I find that whole culture that's been documented in a lot of ways, especially quite recently, I find that really fascinating. It's really, really sad, but I don't know, there's something so shocking about it that I, I just have to know. So I think the whole sort of fixing element should be a really interesting plot point. The next book I got at Gaze Award is Hood by Emma Donoghue. Um, I read Room last year and since then I've been on the lookout for more of her work. And I was actually looking for either Stir Fry or Kissing the Witch when I was there, but they didn't have either, so I decided to get Hood instead. Um, this one is all about it's two girls who go into a relationship while they're sort of teenage girls at a 1970s convent school in Dublin, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, and how one of their lives changes like dramatically when the other dies in a car crash years later. So I think it might be a bit of a weepy but it has got really, really good reviews and I do love Emma Donoghue's writing style, so hopefully that should be pretty good as well. Finally, at Gaze the Word, I picked up Her Land by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I really, really enjoyed The Yellow Wallpaper. In fact, I would maybe say that's one of the best short stories I've ever read. I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Um, so I thought I have to read some more of Perkins Gilman's work. And this one, I think, is her first novel if I remember correctly. Um, I'm trying to see if it says... Da, 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 da. Okay, it doesn't actually say if it's her first novel, but I'm sure I read somewhere that it was. And this one is about three male explorers who discover this sort of utopian country solely populated by women, and they're shocked at, you know, how civilised everything is, so it really prompts sort of I don't know, it prompts a lot of discussion about how they perceive women in their own society and what's right, what's wrong, blah blah blah, um, feminism. <laughs> but yeah, I'm reading this at the moment and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm enjoying it, to be honest. I like the premise, but I, I don't think it's been executed particularly well. Like, the world building is fantastic, but the the whole writing itself is just a bit dry and I find myself tuning out of it um, but I don't know I've only got 50 pages left. Second last bookshop that I went to was Scoob which I wouldn't have really actually thought to go to unless it was for Jen's recommendation saying that it was right next to Games the Word so I thought well I might as well and my purchases here were a little, little more like horror and thriller themed because that's another genre that I really enjoy. The first one that I picked up was Sliver by Ira Levin which I decided to get because I read both Rosemary's Baby and The Stepford Wives last year and I enjoyed both of them like they were two of my best books of the year. I really really liked his writing style and just the way he creates suspense is absolutely amazing. I think Sliver is slightly less horror themed, it's more of a psychological thriller all about sort of this man who's spying on a woman who's just moved into his apartment building um, and there's lots of secrets in the building. And it says Sliver is a sinuous erotic thriller that explores the menacing evil behind a glittering facade of Manhattan skyscrapers, a hypnotic story obsession and the temptation of ultimate power. 
So although it's not horror, that definitely still sounds interesting and I'll pretty much read anything that Ira Levin's written, so that's going to be coming up soon. I also picked up The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham and I've heard a lot of amazing things about John Wyndham but I've never actually read any of his work before so I thought The Day of the Triffids was probably a good place to start as it's probably his best known work so I'm hoping that it's, it's well known for good reasons so yes, looking forward to reading that as well. The last bookshop that I went to was Persephone Books which was absolutely beautiful, like I really really loved it. For those of you that don't know, and I'm assuming that most people do know because it's really, like, it's mentioned a lot in Booktube, Persephone Books is not only a bookshop but it's also a publishing company as well. So they publish um, mainly works by sort of 20th century female writers. There are a few men writers as well, but it's mainly women and it's mainly sort of lesser known stuff. And they publish the books in, like, these beautiful editions. They've got a lovely kind of waxy silver cover. They just they feel really nice in your hands and then the best thing is they all have patterned imprints imprints? what am I talking about? end papers um, yeah they all have like a unique pattern on the end papers every book has something different so that one was knitted and then I've got butterflies on this one um, ignore the bookmarks falling out everywhere but yeah the bookmarks match as well and for every book they have a customised bookmark, it's got matching print, and because each print is unique to each book, it means they can put the blurb on the back, which I think is really smart, because you lose the bookmark and you're like, this goes with this book. Smart. Um, yeah, I think I'm going off on a tangent about Persephone books. But and the first book that I decided to get there it was Cheerful Weather, Cheerful, Cheerful Weather? I can't even speak today. Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strath. Stratchy? Stracky? I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. If anyone knows, please let me know, because I don't like to look like an idiot. Um, yeah, so I think the blurb that they'd put on the shelf next to this one said something like, um, a young bride's matrimonial worries are made even worse by rum. That was it. And I was like, that is me sold. Like, and I bought it on that one sentence summary. Um, and actually, I was reading the catalogue blurb about it just before I started making this video and it said that it was first published in 1932 by Leonard and Virginia Woolf so I thought that was quite cool, it's got a Virginia Woolf connection. The last book that I got, last but not least, was Still Missing by Beth Gutchen. But it sounded really interesting, it's about um, a six year old boy disappears on his way to school and it's all about how his family cope with this and I don't know, it just seems like it could be like quite a nice like quiet, emotional read. I really like all these family dramas where, you know, there's enough time, there's enough pages to really explore how everyone in the family is dealing with whatever event or whatever misfortune has befallen them. I think that's really, really interesting. Um, for example, the likes of like Tell the Wolves I'm Home by Carol Rifka Brunt. I really enjoyed that and I think that one could be, um, Still Missing could be sort of in a similar vein to that. It's obviously got the big event where something goes wrong and then how everything pans out and how the family deal with it and I think that's going to be really, I don't know, it could be quite heartbreaking but at the same time I'm really looking forward to reading it. So that concludes my London book haul from the five bookshops that I went to. Um, I would highly recommend all of them. It also concludes my first ever booktube video so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see on this channel because I'm all kind of a bit like doing um so yeah let me let me know if you enjoyed it let me know if you have any feedback um because i'm now kind of bracing myself for the horror that is editing because i have never done that before but anyway i hope you enjoyed this and i will speak to you soon bye